Hello everybody, Elias5891 is on holiday today, so this is Tim Wee with a Katane module tutorial. Today we're going over the cube module. And before I start the game, let me um, give you a quick summary on the manual. There are actually two different manuals for this module. Why is that? Well, this is one of the manuals, one of the modules which was pu published without a manual and there was a challenge to the community to figure out what the rules of the module are by looking only at the module itself and to determine or to, to write a new manual for it. Uh, this is the third challenge of that kind and um, uh, so one of these manuals, the, ones that, the one that you see here, is actually not the first one that was written. This one was provided by the author after the challenge. The other one, which is this one here, uh, is the result of the challenge. So this one is the result of figuring out how the module works without knowing anything about it. I am going to use both of these manuals in this video. I'm going to walk you through both of them together. Hopefully at the end of this video, you'll be able to say that you can use either one, whichever one you prefer. Um, it might be worth mentioning that the author of the uh, module has disavowed the, uh, the result of his own challenge. Um, he feels that the manual is kind of like a cheat sheet because it leaves something out, but it needs to be remembered that when you figure out the rules as part of a challenge, then obviously some extra steps that the original author had in their manual, you, 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 there is no way to deduce them. So, let's uh, get started. Let's uh, start the game. Now, this module requires some edge work, so I'm going to start by writing that down. We have uh, three batteries and three holders, and two indicators. Three batteries, three holders, lit FRK, unlit IND, and a serial number of 5 Echo 5 Julia Julia 6. Okay, now you will notice I've already made myself a bit of a template here, which um, already kind of hints at the amount of information that we need to read out, which is a lot. Um, so the first one says cube rotations. So this refers to the movements that this cube makes. At some point there will be a brief pause, and then it will repeat the same sequence of six movements. Here's the pause. It's moving down, then it moves right, then it moves clockwise, that is counterclockwise, and then it moves up, and an another up. There are always six rotations, so that's the six rotations we need. Okay, next one is the cube faces. Well, one of the faces has a green dot on them, that in this case that's an 8, so that's the first one. Now, let's take a look at what the manual says regarding the orientation of the other numbers, because if any of them, such as this one here, you can't tell if that's a 6 or a 9 if you don't know which way it's oriented. So, the author's original manual says um, the green LED represents the top face, the red the bottom face, and the digits on the other faces are oriented correctly when the top and bottom faces are oriented correctly. What this means is that if the top uh, face is on the top, then the number is sort of in reading orientation right side up. So this is a 1, this is a 7, and this is a 7, and this is therefore a 6, not a 9. Okay, the other manual, um, if you find this more useful, has this uh, diagram here with the digits in the correct orientation. So here the digits are shown in the manual in the orientation that they would have on the cube relative to the other two faces. So what I like to do is I start at the green, then I go down in the reading order of the number on the green, on the face with the green dot, and then I go to the right and just read off those four digits sort of as if I'm just reading them and then finish off with the red one. So let's do that. The green dot has an 8. The green dot is always in the top left. So going down from there means I'm, I'm going to wait for the green dot to be um, sort of a bit closer to the top so that because having it on the bottom is a bit convenient. Okay, here we go. So this is the first, there is a 1767. 1767. Let's write that down. 1767. 
And finally, the red dot has a six. Now the red dot is in the bottom left, not the top left. So that's a six, not a nine. <laughs> it always rotates away when you need, there you go, it's a six. Okay. The next thing I need to read out is the colors of the wires. Now the wi there are four wires that go to all different parts of this module, but they have this connector here on the top left. We're going to read them in the order one, two, three, four from top to bottom as they are up here. So that would be purple, white, blue, purple. Purple, white, blue, purple. The first cipher is, um, a, is the result of a calculation that we will need to do. So let's skip that for now. The t second and third cipher are actually the symbols on the left screen and the symbols on the bottom screen. So let's read those out. So here's the table with all of the symbols that come up on this module. I'm now going to walk you through the names that we've established for these symbols in the community. Most of the names, um, uh, most of the symbols have multiple possible names and I will list all of them. But uh, there's always one that seems to be the most common. Uh, let's start at the top. This one, this symbol already comes up in uh, symbolic coordinates, so people call that, people already have a name for that. It's called the tunnel. Some people call it supermoon because it's a uh, crescent moon inside a crescent moon inside a crescent moon, but tunnel seems to be the more common. For B, now this one also kind of looks like a tunnel, but the noticeable difference is that the tunnel has the black circle in the middle, which is like the end of the tunnel. But this one doesn't have that. This one is several same shape symbols that are inside each other. We call that the Russian doll, because it's kind of like a Russian doll. And then C, again, we know that from symbolic coordinates. We call that Pluto, because it's uh, the, like the top half of the astrological symbol for Pluto, which we know from the astrology module. Uh, some people call it uh, ball and cup, or, or just cup, or cup and ball, or similar. Uh, this one, D, uh, this one looks a bit like a spring, but squeezed together. So we call that squeeze. Uh, e looks like a flag waving in the wind seen through a circular window. So, you know, especially a flag with horizontal lines, we just call that the flag. F is uh, suspiciously like the Pepsi logo. Uh, G looks like, it, it looks like a solar eclipse, really. It's um, when the moon moves over the sun, you have the black circle, which is the moon, and then the thin circle around it is the corona of the sun. So most call it the eclipse. Some might call it black circle. Uh, hotel, this one's a fireball, that's pretty self-explanatory. Many computer games have something that looks like this. Now this one, uh, most people call it Charlie because it's in the shape of the letter Charlie, you know, the letter C. But some have suggested that you could call it parliament because it looks like the seating in a parliament, but Charlie seems to be the more common. Similarly for this one, uh, because it looks like the letter O, we call that Oscar. However, it is easy to confuse with this one, which also kind of looks like the Oscar. Um, but this one is sparser, and th this one looks a bit like the aerial view of Stonehenge. If you don't know what Stonehenge is, go ahead and look it up on Wikipedia. It's very fascinating. So um, some people might call this the white circle to uh, contrast it with Eclipse, which is the black circle. Uh, this one, again, symbolic coordinates already has that. We call that the vortex. This one looks a bit like the kind of ribbon that you fix to your chest when you win an award or something. So we call that the ribbon. It's rotated 90 degrees, but still. Uh, this one looks like a meteor that is coming towards you. Uh, this, you know, meteor and fireball sound kind of similar. I mean, if you say fireball and you see the symbol, you might think that's it. But you need to remember those two are different. The fireball is like, like from video games and the meteor is like from uh, disaster movies where the meteor hits the atmosphere and sort of blows up, uh, glows up, uh, evaporates, whatever. Uh, the next one is a check mark that's pretty self-explanatory too. Now this one here, many people call that the reload symbol or refresh or something, but actually the most common uh, seems to be the coffee stain. Now if you, if you look at it closely, you will notice it really does look like a coffee stain that is left by a cup on the table. So because of the wittiness, apparently that uh, has um, taken over. This last one, this looks like a planet or a globe. Uh, most people call it the globe, uh, but some people swear on calling it Captain Planet because it looks like the logo of that superhero. And similarly, that last one, 
uh, looks a bit like the a shield of Captain America, another superhero. But I'm just going to call it the star. In fact, most people call it the star or star in a circle. Because that's, again, pretty self-explanatory. Now let's go back to the module. So let's read those out. On the left screen, we have uh, meteor, coffee stain, uh, fireball, meteor, fireball, uh, globe, meteor, and fireball. On the bottom, we have check mark. And by the way, they always show the same sequence of symbols. They don't change. So you can always just wait for them to reappear. Pluto, meteor, uh, Pepsi, uh, flag, and ribbon. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 4, 6, 8. I did not miss any of them. Now, um, it might also be useful to write down how many times each of the colors appear on the square buttons. So I'm going to write that down too. Button colors. I forgot to add that to my temp template. So let's put that in. So as a diffuser, I would say uh, blue, there are two. Orange, there are three. White, this counts as white, even though it's a light gray, but it counts as white. There are two, and green, there are one. Okay, so what do we do with this information? So first of all, let's start with the cube rotations. There's this section here, rotation codes, and each of the rotations translates into a number. Now, it uses the terms tip forwards and tip backwards here. It's not entirely clear which, which is which. I mean, they're obviously up and down, but which is which. The other manual has graphical representations of the rotations, which is clearer when you can see the cube but the diffuser still needs to communicate these, um, these rotations appropriately. Now, I personally prefer using the words up and down because that's the direction of the arrow in this manual. So let's take a look at the up arrow. It says last digit in the serial number, which here is associated with backwards. So tip backwards means up or um, sort of rotating away from you. Tip forward means tipping towards you. This here that you just saw, this is a tip backwards. Okay, um, so with that out of the way, uh, let's translate all of those rotations into numbers. The down rotation is the first digit in the serial number. That would be a 5. Okay, the right rotation, which is this one here, is the square button with the same color as the first wire. The first wire was purple. How many buttons are purple? None of them. So that's a 0. Clockwise translates to a 4 counterclockwise to a 7, that's this one here, and up is this one, the last digit of the serial number, that would be a 6. I'm going to remove those commas and make it a single six-digit number. The uh, wire colors also translate to uh, numbers. In the author's own manual, we have this table here, blue, green, orange, purple, red. It tells you here that white and gray count as the same color. So um, the wires are always white, but the buttons are gray, and that counts as the same color. So that's, that's what it's hinting at. Um, so let's see, the purple wire translates to the sum of the digits on the cube. Well, the cube had these digits, so that's 9 plus 7 is 16, plus 6 is 22, plus 7 is 29, plus 6 is 35. So that would be a 35, but we're only interested in the last digit of the answer, so we'll just put in a 5. This is also purple, so that's also a 5. The white translates to the number 6 simply, and blue translates to the wire position, 1, 2, 3, or 4, red from the top. So that's actually position number 3, but then it says plus 5, so it's an 8. So this is, the, this is what the wire colors translate to. Um, you should not really remove the colors, though, because you might need them later, so I'm going to keep those around. So, um, let's also translate these symbols. In the author's manual, uh, there is this table here which uh, translates these symbols into um, letters, and then the instructions tell you to turn those letters into um, uh, digits. Um, it, it's here. Each symbol represents a letter, and then once the letters have been obtained, convert each letter to its equivalent number, where alpha is 1, bravo is 2, etc and then modulo 10, all of that. So we could actually go directly from symbol to number 
And when the module was solved as a challenge and the manual was not known, then obviously this association with letters was not known. So naturally, the manual that came out of the challenge just associates the uh, symbols directly with the digits. So here we go. Uh, the meteor is number four. All of the meteors are four. Coffee stain is number uh, six on the far right. It's actually a 16, but we're only looking at the last digit, so that's a six. The fireball is number eight. That's an eight, that's an eight, that's an eight. The globe is a seven. The check mark is a five. The vortex is number two. Squeeze is number four. Pluto is number three. Pepsi is number six. The flag is number five. And the ribbon, finally, is number three. I'm going to remove all of those commas to make that nice little eight digit numbers. Okay, so much for the decoding of all of the information. Now we need to calculate the first cipher. How do we do that? Again, let's look at the author's manual first. Uh, the first cipher is actually calculated from the rotation codes, the face values, which is the numbers on the faces of the cube, and the codes from the wire colors. So let's look at all of these formulae in order. First of all, the rotation codes are in the correct order, one, two, three, four, five, six. The cube faces are in reverse order, six, five, four, three, two, one. So let's actually reverse the order of these, six, seven, six, seven, one, eight. That's the numbers we want. And the wire codes are in the order three, four, one, two. So the third one, the fourth one, the first one, and then the second one, we get this code. And now we'll just um, add each column here. So 5 plus 6 is 11 plus 8 is 19. We, again, we're looking only at the last digit. Um, 7 plus 5 plus 0 is 12. Uh, this is 15, so that's a 5. This is 20, so that's a 0. This is 7. And this is a 14. But we need to be careful with those two numbers because they're wrong. Uh, this number needs to be modulo 8 rather than 10. So actually 7 is correct, but if, if this had been an 8, for example, you would have to turn that into a 0 because modulo 8, 8 is 0. But we have a 7 here. For the last one, which is 14, we want to take that modulo 9. Well, 14 is 5 more than 9, so that's actually a 5. Okay. And now um, for the final code, we take a look at this section here. Begin by multiplying the first cipher by 100. So we just padded it with two extra zeros. And now we have three eight-digit numbers. And again, we're just going to add up all the digits. So 9 plus 4 plus 5 is 18. Again, take only the last digit. It says modulo 10, which is the same as taking the last digit. 2 plus 6 plus 2 is 10. Uh, this is 17. Um, 7 plus 3, uh, 4, excuse me, 4 plus 3 is 7, 7 plus 8 is 15, plus 4 is 19, 5 plus 7 is 12, plus 6 is 18, 4 plus 5 is a 9, and 8 plus 3 is 11. This is our final code. Now what do we do with the final code? Once you have obtained your final cipher, you can begin to solve the module. Each of those digits will translate to a group of letters according to this table. Let's look at the first digit first, that's an 8, so we get C G H O, C G H O. So that would translate to the symbols Pluto, Eclipse, Fireball, and Checkmark. Okay. Once again, during the challenge, the association with letters was not known. So the uh, the challenge uh, manual just gives you the groups of the symbols directly. So group number eight would be this one. To speed up this tutorial, I'm going to use this part of the uh, the new manual, the uh, challenge manual. So, what do we do with this group? Well, in stage one, we want to push down all square buttons, not the round button, because that's the submit button, with a symbol in the group. So, let's see. We have a Pluto symbol, so we press Pluto. So, we're communicating to our diffuser now. Eclipse. Nope. A fireball. There is one. If there are multiple, we want to press all of them. The last one is checkmark. We do have a checkmark, but only one. So let's see if that is the correct answer for the first stage. We get a lot of beeping sounds, and then we get a green triangle to say that this is 
the correct answer for the first stage. Let's move on to the second stage. We now have a digit zero. That's this group. So diffuser, press the tunnel. There is no tunnel. Uh, Pepsi. There is only one Pepsi. Uh, Charlie. We don't have any Charlies. Again, the submit button doesn't count at this point. And a vortex. There is a vortex here. Now in stage two, there is more to push because the same symbol as the round button also wants to be pushed. So we now look for Charlie's. Well, we already had Charlie in the group, but if this were, for example, a check mark on the submit button, we would also have to press this. But we don't, so let's submit this. Okay, we have a green triangle. The third digit is a seven. Let's take a look at group number seven. We have tunnel, uh, diffuser, press all of the tunnels, there are none. Press all of the stone hinges, there are none. And all of the ribbons, one, two, there are two of those. Okay, for stage three, which is here, again, it's only those in the group. There's no special this time. For the fourth stage, which is the digit seven, Uh, it's the same digit, so it'll be the same group. We we already know we don't have any tunnels, any stone hinges. We have two of the ribbons, so let, let's just press those. And um, for the fourth stage, there is this extra rule, the same color as the round button, not the same symbol. So we tell the diffuser, press all of those, the tunnels, the stone hinges, the ribbons, and all of the buttons that have the same color as the submit button, which in this case is gray. So we want to press those two, uh, gray or white, whichever you want to call it. The fifth stage has the digit nine. Digit nine translates to this group. And again, stage five is just normal. So just press these. We have Russian doll. We don't have that. We have squeeze. We do press that. Charlie. We don't have a Charlie on the square buttons and a meteor. We don't have Meteor either. Again, Fireball is not the same as Meteor. So that's that. In the sixth stage, we have the number eight, which is this group. Um, now in the sixth stage, we have this extra rule here, the same color as the first wire. We know what the first wire is, so the expert can just tell them all the purple buttons as well as the ones in this group. Uh, we're in the sixth stage. Yeah, I'm just making sure. So all the Plutos, we do have a Pluto here. Uh, all the Eclipses, we don't have that. All of the Fireballs, there you go. And all of the check marks, that's that. And all of the Purples. Well, we don't have any Purples. In fact, we know that there are no Purples because the uh, diffuser gave us the colors. But you know, if if you you, you could do without reading out this information, so you just say all the purples and the diffuser will just not press any, there aren't any purple. Then the seventh stage, once again, push all the square buttons in this group. So we're looking for a Russian doll, which we don't have, a squeeze, we do have, only one, a Charlie, we don't have, and a fireball. No, a meteor, not a fireball. So the meteor, we don't have a meteor. In stage seven, we want to also push all of the same color as the third wire, which is blue. And we know that there are two blues. So press all the blues. That, that, submit. And that's that. That leaves us only with the last stage, which says push down all square buttons without a symbol in the group. So now we want to negate the last group. The last digit is a one. So diffuser, press all except Russian doll, flag, Stonehenge, and checkmark. So let's see, Russian dolls, we don't have any. Um, flags, we don't have any. Stonehenge, we don't have any. But checkmark, we do. Now let me absolutely make sure we don't have any of those. I think we got that right. So we need to press all except for the check mark. Now, once you've pressed the button, let me demonstrate that here, you, you cannot click it again. So once you've clicked it, it's in. So if you accidentally, you know, if your expert says, well, check mark, and you press the check mark, then you're screwed. So let's first of all 
see if this is correct. And that's the module solved. All the buttons come back up, the symbols still... The sim oh, interesting, the symbols remain, the rotation stops, and the module is marked as solved. So, as you can see, there is quite a lot to do, but I'm going to do all of it again on the second module. Here we go, let's delete all of this information. Fortunately, we do not need to read out the edge work again. Okay, so the button colors, we have uh, two greens, one orange, two reds, uh, one purple, one white, and one blue. Uh, uh, once again, red and orange look kind of similar, but this is red, this is red, and this one is orange. You can also see the wires here. The top one is red, the middle one is orange. Some people confuse those two, but here we have both of them, so we can see the contrast. So I do have... I actually did make the mistake. We actually have two reds. Um, one way to check this is to make sure that these numbers add up to 8, because there are always 8 buttons. 2, 4, 6, 8. Yep, it does add up to 8. So, cube rotations. Let's see, let's wait for the gap, Let the, um, the pause. Here's the pause. So now we have up, down, left, Left again, up, counterclockwise, and that's it. That's six of them. The cube faces, let's start with the green face, that's the one, and then we have six, four, six, eight. One, six, four, six, eight, and the red dot it has a one. So these are the cube faces. The wire colors, red, orange, green, white. Um, red, orange, green, white. Okay. Um, the symbols on the left, well, we've got uh, Coffee Stain, Pluto, there was another Pluto, I think then we have another Coffee, no, that's the Charlie, then we have Eclipse, then we have Coffee Stain, uh, that is Oscar and Eclipse. The bottom symbols are Coffee Stain, Planet, I mean Globe, uh, then we have Meteor, uh, Vortex, Vortex, and then after the two vortexes, we had a check mark, globe, and tunnel. Uh, so, so far so good. Uh, now that I've walked you through the author's manual, I'm going to stick with the, um, uh, the denser manual, which is actually only two pages. So when you print it, you actually save paper because you can just print it two-sided. Two um, so, cube rotations. Up. Translates to the last digit of the serial number. That's a six. Down. Translates to the first digit of the serial number. That's a five. Also, here's an up. Let's make that a six. Uh, then we have two lefts. Now, left translates to the number of square buttons with the same color as the third wire, which is green. So that's a two. So we have a two and a two. And then counterclockwise is always seven. That's this one here. Um, the wire colors translate to uh, red is the number of modules on the bomb plus seven. We have five modules, so that's a 12, which is a two, because we're looking only for the uh, last digits. Um, then orange translates to the green square buttons, which is two plus three is five. Green translates to the blue square button buttons plus seven, that would be an eight. And finally, white gives us a six. Now let's rearrange these. The cube faces need to be in reverse order. So it's that. And the wire colors need to be in the order 3, 4, 1, 2 here. 3, 4, 1, 2. 3, 4, 1, 2. That's that. Now let's add these all up. 6 plus 1 plus 8 is 15. 5 plus 8 plus 6, that is a 9. 2 plus 6 plus 2, that is a 10. 2 plus 4 plus 5 is 11, so 1, and then 6 plus 6, uh, modulo 8, 6 plus 6 is 12, modulo 8 gives you 4, not a 2, and then 7 plus 1 is 8, which modulo 9 is still 8. So that's our first cipher, and we pad that with two zeros as usual. Coffee stain is a 6, so that's a 6, that's a 6, and that's a 6. Uh, Pluto is a 3. 
so that's a three. Um, CH was, uh, oh, hmm. I, see, I couldn't remember if it was Charlie or checkmark, so I should have written it out. It is actually Charlie, which is a nine. Then the eclipse is a seven. A seven Oscar is zero, as we know. The checkmark five. Tunnel is a one. Globe is a seven. There's another globe. Vortex is a two. And the meteor is a four, because it's not a fireball, it's a meteor. Remove the commas. Wink. And now our final, we just add these up. So that's a seven. That's a nine. Seven, two. Uh, six plus seven is 13. This is a nine. Seven, eight. Let me go through that again just to make absolutely sure that I got these right. Um, this is a two. This is a three. Uh, four plus five. I think this is correct. So, again, diffuser, let's press some buttons. Number seven translates to this group. Please press all of the tunnels. We don't have any of those. Press all of the Stonehenges. And by the way, this is Russian doll, not tunnel. Um, Stonehenge, we don't have. And ribbon, we don't have any of those either. So, the first stage is actually no buttons at all. Ta-da! That was correct. The second digit is a 9, so please press all of the Russian dolls, all of the squeezies, that's this one, all of the Charlies, we don't have any of that, we do have one here, but we don't want to press that yet, and the Meteor we have here. Um, we have three flags, that's quite a lot. Right, and this is the second stage, so we also want to press all of the buttons with the same symbol as the round button. So again, Charlie, we don't have that, so not that. For the third stage, we want the digit 7. That would be this one. Let me actually make this clearer so um, you can actually see. Let me put an up arrow there. This is the stage we're at. So we've already done 7 before, and I mean, we've done the group 7 before, so we remem remember there were no buttons, so we'll just press that. Then in the fourth stage, we have the number two, which translates to this group. Press all of the squeezies. Thank you. Uh, all of the meteors. All of the globes. There are no globes. And, because there's a stage number four, push down all square buttons with the same color as the round button. So, that. That moves us on to stage five. I'm kind of hoping that I will make a mistake so that I can demonstrate to you what happens when you do. But let's move on. Group number three is Pluto. Uh, eclipse. And uh, coffee stain. There are no coffee stain stains. There's only one eclipse. There's only one Pluto. And this is stage number five, so no special ruling. Then in stage number six, we have group number nine. Please press all the Russian dolls. Uh, all of the squeeze. All of the Charlies. We don't have any of those. And all of the meteors. Okay, um, just making sure. Right, and we're in stage number six. So we also want to push everything that has red color. Again, red and orange are easy to confuse. This one is red. This one is not, but we've already pressed it, so it doesn't matter. The seventh stage uh, is uh, group seven again, which we already know. Group seven, we don't have any buttons, but we also want the same color as the third wire, which we know here is green. So please, diffuser, press all of the green buttons. Boink, boink, boink. And finally, in the last stage, we want all except these. So, Diffuser, press all except Pluto, can't press Pluto. Eclipse, can't press Eclipse. Fireball, don't have that, don't care. Checkmark, don't have that, don't care. So, all except those two. Boink, 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 boink. There we go. And that's our module solved.
Okay, now let me just quickly show you what happens when you get a strike on this module. Here's a module where I've already solved two of the stages correctly, as you can tell from the green triangles. I'm now going to enter a wrong solution. After all of these beep noises, I will eventually get a strike. But as you can see, nothing changed. The two stages are still intact. The numbers on the cube are still the same. Everything is still the same. So you can just try again. Uh, and you don't need to worry about any of the previous stages that you've already solved. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below or contact me on Discord, whichever you prefer. In the meantime, happy diffusing and don't explode.